All right, so hopefully this is my last video on refraction. Uh, anyway, so this video I'm going to explain why I think uh, 7 over 6R is an underestimate uh, for the amount of refraction that we see, uh, and why 4 over 3R is actually a better estimate, uh, and also why it is seen so much in the literature. All right, so obviously on Mick West's uh, Metabunk calculator, you see his standard refraction adjustment uh, of 7 over 6 times the radius, and that has the uh, effect of looming things up slightly. So objects in the distance appear higher than they are geometrically. Uh, and his reasoning uh, was based off a few uh, websites by this guy, uh, Professor Andrew Young. I think he's an astronomy professor. Uh, he's quite clear on his website that the, the 7 over 6 R adjustment is uh, quite an estimate, uh, not very accurate. Uh, but nonetheless, I did do a video last year uh, going through his reasoning and showing how he derived uh, that 7 over 6R, which is just an approximate, an approximate value close to this uh, actual result of 17.4% extra radius. All right, so what I'm gonna be looking at uh, is a, uh, a book produced in 1966 uh, by the National Bureau of Standards, uh, which is now NIST, so N-I-S-T, um, by Bean and Dutton. Uh, and it appears in the references and the citations for pretty much every paper that I've read uh, regarding refraction. Uh, it incorporates five years of worldwide empirical density gradient data, uh, so basically ground stations and weather balloons, uh, and also gives a, a fairly simple derivation uh, for an equation for the effective Earth radius, uh, which is the, the radius multiplier of 7 over 6 R or otherwise. Uh, here's a link, which I'll also put in the description. All right, so here is that equation. Uh, it's pretty early on in the book. Uh, so K is the effective Earth radius, or the, the 7 over 6R multiplier, or 4 over 3 multiplier. Um, and just to keep in mind that this effective Earth radius is not uh, fudging the actual radius of the Earth. It's really just a geometrical or a mathematical simplification. Uh, so in reality, when light refracts, it refracts in a curve. Uh, we also have a curved surface of the Earth. Uh, so to make the, the geometry simpler, we flatten out uh, the, the curved light ray uh, and also flatten out the surface of the Earth uh, synchronously, if that's a word, uh, until the light ray is perfectly straight. Uh, and that makes the mathematics and the geometry much simpler, dealing only with uh, a straight line and a circle rather than two curved lines. All right, so here's that formula again. Uh, so again, we've got K. Uh, this is the actual uh, effective Earth radius or the, the multiplier of the radius. So this is the 7 over 6 R. Uh, we have this term A, which is the actual radius of the Earth. And for that, we're going to use 6,371 kilometers. Uh, and then we have this term, delta N over delta H or H, uh, and that is the change in. So the word delta, uh, the symbol delta means change in, uh, N is the refractive index, uh, and H is the height, uh, also measured in kilometers. So this term is the change in refractive index with respect to the change in height. All right, so pretty much what I've just said, N is the refractive index, uh, and you've probably seen that the refractive index of glass is about 1.50. Uh, and the refractive index of water uh, is about 1.33. Uh, the refractive index of air is only a tiny, tiny bit above uh, 1, so 1.000300. Uh, and as you know, the refractive index is a measure not only of how much light will bend, uh, but how much light is slowed down uh, in a particular medium. So uh, a refractive index of this 1.000300 uh, just means that light is very barely slowed down in our atmosphere and only just bends a little bit uh, relative to something like glass or water. Uh, so again, H is the height. Uh, and we're, since we're measuring our radius in kilometers, uh, the height needs to be in kilometers. Uh, and again, delta means change in. So delta N uh, means change in refractive index uh, and delta H is change in height. All right, so... If our n value at the surface uh, is that number 1.00300 uh, and n 
at three kilometers above the surface is 1.000180. Uh, then the refractive index has changed by this much. So triple zero, one, two, zero uh, over the course of three kilometers. So we can work out what our delta N over delta H is. So delta N, uh, it's gone down by 120 units over three kilometers. Uh, so our delta N over delta H or our change in refractivity or our refractivity gradient uh, is negative 0 0.000040. And obviously that's a lot of zeros. Um, so to save us from working with so many decimal places, uh, they've, they've made a convention uh, where if you use the, the capital N, uh, it's equivalent to uh, knocking off the one at the start uh, and multiplying it by a million, basically. Uh, so our original uh, refractive index at the surface of 1.000300 uh, is the same as a capital N of 300. So you just take off the one and lop off uh, the first three zeros. Just makes it a lot easier to read. Uh, and again, a delta N, so a change in refractivity, uh, is again the same. You knock off the first three zeros. Uh, so that's a delta N of minus 40. Uh, sometimes you'll see in the literature that the minus sign is also left off uh, and the context of, of the, uh, the page you're reading will or should give you, uh, should tell you whether it is actually positive or negative. Generally, if they're given as a positive, it means that the density is decreasing uh, as you gain altitude. All right, so let's plug in some values and just play around with the formula a little bit. Uh, we wanna see what value we wanna put in or need to put in to make this value spit out uh, 7 over 6 R as a result. Uh, and to do that, uh, we need to put in a delta N over delta H of around negative uh, 0 0.000022 uh, or 22 big N per kilometer. Uh, and if we plug that in, uh, 22 N per kilometer, we get a value of around about 1.17. And that is the 7 over 6 R effective earth radius multiplier. Uh, if we plug in a delta N over delta H of zero, uh, then what we are saying is that there is no change in density between the surface and one kilometer up above the surface. Uh, and therefore there is no refraction at all. Uh, and if you use the curve calculator at uh, GitHub, so the DZB curve calculator, um, if you are using that, then what you are actually asserting, if you use the results from that, uh, is that the density of the atmosphere doesn't change with elevation. And that's just false. Right, so we've plugged in zero and we've plugged in a number to get us the 7 over 6 R uh, radius multiplier from the Metabug calculator. Uh, let's try plugging in some other numbers. Uh, so this paper here on the right uh, defines a super refractive gradient uh, as any number in terms of big N per kilometer. Uh, greater than negative 100 uh, between that and minus 156.9. Uh, so if we plug in a delta N of 100 or negative 0 0.000100, uh, we get an effective earth radius. So a K value, it spits out from the equation uh, of 2.76. And that's roughly equivalent to 16 over 6R, uh, which is quite a lot bigger than the 7 over 6R. Uh, I also want to talk about what a, a K value of infinity means. So what happens if the number that this formula spits out uh, is equal to infinity? Uh, and what number do we have to put in to give us that result? Uh, to give us a result nearing infinity or approaching infinity, uh, this term on the right uh, needs to approach minus one. Uh, so remember, this is our radius of 6371 kilometers. Uh, so to get that to equal to minus one, we need to set this delta N delta H uh, to a special value, 0 0.000157, uh, which is the same value you see over here. Uh, if we plug that in, we will get a K value that approaches infinity. And what does that mean? All right, so remember uh, this, this K value or effective earth radius multiplier is a simplification. Uh, it means we can have a straight line of sight against a curved uh, surface of the Earth. So this K value is, an, uh, is a radius multiplier. Uh, and obviously, if we have an infinite radius, 
what we basically have is a straight line earth. So that means that if our uh, line of sight or our ray of light is straight uh, and we have a circle with an infinite radius, we effectively have two straight lines. Uh, and that would mean that our earth would appear effectively flat or visually flat. Um, so a very large K value approaching infinity means that we would see the world as a flat plane. All right. So now for some real world data. All right, so we plugged in a few numbers just to play around with the formula. So we put in zero and that meant no refraction at all. Uh, we plugged in 22 to give us our uh, Metabunk 7 over 6R Earth Radius Multiplier. Uh, we plugged in a value that's defined as super refractive. So we plugged in 100 uh, and got, an, uh, got a Radius Multiplier of 16 over 6R approximately. Uh, and we also worked out that if we plug in a value of 157, uh, we would get an infinite radius for the Earth and therefore it would appear flat. All right, so this map uh, is the, the monthly average of the change in big N uh, for this month of February. Uh, and this is over five years of data. Uh, so they had ground stations and weather balloons measuring the density of the air uh, at the ground and a couple of kilometers up uh, and working out what the change in density is or the change in refractive index. All right, so we have some, some uh, little spots here. So Central Australia, uh, a big N of 30. Uh, Central Africa, so the Sahara, uh, it also has around about 30. Uh, and this area here, what's that, Texas and maybe Colorado or something, uh, also has a, a delta N or a big N uh, change of 30. Uh, compare that to somewhere like uh, off the coast of Western Africa. So this little bit here has an average for February, uh, big delta N uh, of 80. Uh, you also have quite large numbers around the subcontinent uh, and around, uh, what's that, California, or the Gulf of California. Um, so this, if you were to look at this map and say, what is the average, uh, the average delta N for the world? Uh, you'd probably come up with a number somewhere close to 40. Uh, and that is also very close to the average they give in the literature, which is either 39 or 40. All right, so now that we've got our formula, we can plug it in and work out an effective Earth radius, and that comes out to be 1.33, uh, or four over three R. Um, and that's basically why I think seven over six R is an underestimate, uh, and four over three R is a better estimate. All right, so I mentioned West Africa, uh, and here are a couple of papers where they've actually studied the average refractivity gradient uh, over several years. So this first one is 14 years worth of data from Abu Dhabi, uh, where they've measured the refractivity uh, between the surface and one kilometer up, uh, and found it to vary between minus 200. Uh, and remember the, the value of minus 157 uh, was enough for the earth to appear completely flat. Uh, so this would actually appear as a concave earth, believe it or not. Uh, so varied between minus 200 and plus 63, uh, where the light rays would actually be bending upwards. Uh, but the long-term median value of uh, delta big N uh, worked out to be minus 71.3. So much greater than the global standard of minus 39 and minus 40. Uh, and if you plug that into the formula, you get a K factor of 1.83. So obviously far bigger than seven over six uh, and even far bigger than uh, four over three. Uh, here's another one from Nigeria where they worked out that their average uh, delta N was about minus 56, uh, which worked out to be a K factor of minus 1.5 uh, or 9 over 6R if you like it in those terms. All right, and it's not just those particular areas that can have uh, super refractive gradients. So this is a map uh, showing, as you can see at the bottom, uh, the percent of time where the gradient is less than minus 100 big N per kilometre. So that's basically saying how often in certain locations do you get a, a super refractive uh, set of atmospheric conditions. Uh, so again, uh, West Africa, you can see it's pretty much all the time. Uh, places like Florida, um, around here, uh, around the subcontinent, quite a lot. Uh, but even places like uh, St. Bees. So Anthony Riley on his belly uh, looking across to Isle of Man. Uh, experiences super refractive conditions roughly 5% of the time. All right, so there's another quick paper that I wanna uh, chat about, and that is one that was brought to my attention by Life is Short. 
uh, and it measured the, the K factor uh, around about 1.8 meters above the surface, which is like generally the, the height above the surface that surveyors work at. So refraction is quite an important uh, factor to take into account there. Uh, what they found is, is an enormous variance uh, in this K factor. So a, a range of K between minus four and plus 16. So remember normally we're talking about a K of around uh, seven over six R, 1.17. Uh, or 4 over 3R, which is 1.33. And these guys are finding huge multiples of that very, very close to the surface. They also go on to say in the paper that they acknowledge that surface types like ice or water may even produce larger refraction effects uh, as described in section two. So I recommend people read that paper, uh, particularly their discussions about uh, the steadiness of the density gradient uh, as you gain altitude. All right, so the takeaways from this video would be First of all, there is empirical data, so ground stations and weather balloons, that sort of thing, uh, that demonstrate that 7 over 6R is actually an underestimate uh, and that 4 over 3R is actually a better estimate in the first kilometre above the surface. Also that observations very close to the surface and especially observations over water, uh, so all these laser tests and mirror flash tests uh, are where refraction effects are the most extreme and the most variable. Uh, so don't even bother with observations close to the surface. You're just giving, it, giving us an excuse to invoke extremes of refraction. Uh, so I don't care that Sleeping Warrior can see the Isle of Man uh, on his belly at the beach at St. Bees, and I don't care if Wide Awake can see Cutter's Rock, because I know uh, that at times there are extreme refraction uh, at these locations. Uh, so if you really want to impress me, uh, get some elevation where the density gradient is relatively steady, uh, and we won't be able to fall back on extremes of refraction. Uh, and if you really want to impress me, explain why two and a half thousand meters of Kanagu cannot be seen.